I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As you are. <laughs> can, I have a, can I have a motion to go out of order, please? I'll move it. Motion by Second. Deputy Mayor Hay, seconded by Trustee Kane. I would like to start out tonight with uh, two resolutions which state that the incorporated village of Sag Harbor, resolution of the Board of Trustees promoting police officer Kelly Anderson and police officer Nicholas Samat to the rank of sergeant. So will Kelly and Nick please come up and be sworn in. First, I need a motion. I'd like to make that motion. Motion by Trustee Porsche. I have a second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Plum. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Congratulations. So it's official. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'd like to just take a quick second to sound that I have the mayor and the trustees for your continued support of our department. We really appreciate it. We look forward to continuing working together. Just thank you again for your support. Thank you, thank Chief. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, no one's saying for the sewer report. <laughs> We're going off the cocktails. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kids are great, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. If there's any big important things to do, we have to swear. Really. I remember. They do, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been playing. Good. Yeah. Michael's back playing golf. Yeah. Look it out. Take care. Okay, so that, that brings us to the approval of the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes from the regular meeting held on July 9th, 2024. So moved. Motion by Trustee Corr, second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Kane. All those in favor? Aye. 
Opposed? So carried. Motion to approve the minutes from the special meeting held on July 23rd, 2024. I have a motion. So moved. Motion by Trustee Kane. A second? Good. Second by Trustee Plum. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. That brings us now to the Treasurer's report. Charles? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Good meeting, uh, trustees. Um, as you know, June 1st was the beginning of our new fiscal year, and with that, we filled all of our property taxes. And at this point in time, because people, we, between June and July, we collect about 60% of the $9 million of our tax base. Um, we're pretty flush with cash, not spend it because we know, you know, it comes in and it goes out, right? Oh, I know that. We have a balanced budget. So, what I've been news is we've got a good cash balance now, a good buffer. Uh, and uh, collections are on pace with uh, in the last couple of years. In terms of the departments, the building department continues to do very well. The trend we saw in the first six months of the year continued into June, so that's very good for our, our balance sheet. Uh, in terms of expenditures, in I guess in May, we did paving on Main Street and Bay Street. Absolutely. And we paid those vendors about $330,000. Good news, both those projects are covered by grants, the big one, Main Street, by New York State CHIPS. So we've already submitted that. And when New York State gets around to paying us, you know, we'll get that back. And that, you know, that kind of rolls from project to project year to year. So that's it. Um, otherwise, it was, you know, from a financial standpoint, quiet in uh, the months of June and July. You know, I corresponded with Aiden that was starting the financing to align the financing for the sewer expansion project. And you'll remember that the first phase was fully covered by grants. So what we're financing is our cash flow. because so we've got to pay the construction companies and then submit for reimbursement for the grants. You know, so by the time we pay, get the documentation submitted and they pay us, we're going to have to fund the construction. Uh, so we will be approaching the financing a year at a time. We need to borrow what we expect to use in the first year. And then as we get the grant reimbursements, we can pay that off. And at the end of the year, we'll reassess and make more borrowings. They're supposed to, I'll just interrupt you for a second. We're supposed to see that grant from the federal government for $1.25 million, I believe. Uh, Congressman Laloder will be here tomorrow. So I'm going to find out the status of that. It was supposed to be coming up very shortly. They told me it would be 60 to 90 days. We're about at that point. We're getting close to it. So that should help us. That's a non-matching grant that's funds right. given directly to us. It's wonderful. And it's not reimbursement either, is no. it? No. Yeah. So we can use that to finance. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so to the extent we get clarity on that, we can build it into our expectations sure. for borrowing. And at this stage, I think Cameron's still working on the numbers. We're waiting for his latest estimate on what the construction costs have been the timing. But I think the initial borrowing is in the range of two to three million dollars. Right. Roughly. Yep. And we're, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But going, we're out to bid and waiting for for, for responses. That's it. That's it. Yep. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept the treasurer's report? So moved. Motion by Trustee Kane. Second. Second. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Hale. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. That brings us now to our department committee reports. <clears throat> I will start out with the police department. As you just saw, we promoted two sergeants, which was, was much needed supervision for the department. Um, as I said, at the plan to restructure our police department is moving forward uh, pretty smoothly. Uh, we're also looking to add another police officer at some point full time. So it's part of our ongoing plan for our police department. Uh, in the month of July, the police department answered 1,014 calls for service. There were 10 aggravated unlicensed operation, 20 suspended registrations. It's a lot of suspended registrations. Two open container arrests, 38 motor vehicle accidents. So as you can see, as things get busy with the traffic, hence we get more motor vehicle accidents. There were 32 total arrests and there were 195 uniform traffic tickets issued. Uh, the TCOs have been doing a really good job as far as issuing summons for parking. I believe the numbers are up and that will, that will reflect in your report. 
they're out there, they're doing a very difficult job. I think that people need to realize that we need to support our law enforcement. We need to support our TCOs. I see some criticism on social media that I'm not very happy about. Uh, most people don't realize what goes into the day-to-day -day workings of these jobs. We have two police officers, two, on duty on a shift. So you just take that into context with the traffic, the population that's out here. They're doing an excellent job and my heart goes out to them and I want to applaud the job that they've been doing. And I just want to say to our residents, we need to show more support and uh, less criticism on social media. If you have an issue with the police department, please contact me or Chief Drake. We're always out there. We're, we're ready to listen. If there's any issues that need to be addressed. I just wanted to put that out there. And that concludes my police department report, which then brings us to the fire department. In the month of July, 2024, the fire department volunteered over 1,375 man hours. During the month, the officers and members of the department responded to 106 calls for service. These calls included four different types of fires, three motor vehicle accidents, two searches for people in need of assistance on the water, and we had countless false alarms. This July was a busy, busy month as last year's record setting July. We started out the month celebrating the 4th of July by attending the annual parade in Southampton and standing by for a few firework events. We were also present at a couple of motorcycle rides and the annual Jordan's run. With all these types of events <clears throat> and the larger than normal call volume, we were kept extremely busy. Be safe and uh, please enjoy the rest of the summer. That's from our first assistant chief, Mike Geyer. Also in relation to the fire department, I just wanna make the board aware and the public aware that I've been meeting at the fire museum with uh, members of the Sag Harbor partnership who have stepped forward to help raise funds to renovate the building. We've met with Lee Skolnick. I met with Karen Arigioni, Aragoni, excuse me, who is also an architect. We took measurements in the building and I am going to move forward with the renovation there. The first step that I would like to do, and I'm going to come up with a bid spec. And I went over this with the architects and with the partnership is to open up the walls, take out the sheetrock, um, to see the actual bones of the building so we can get a really accurate price on how to uh, get it back where it's supposed to be. The other building that needs much attention is the Murray Hill Firehouse. The siding needs to be redone. Some of the trim needs to be painted. There's a roofing condition and it needs to be climate controlled as far as uh, air conditioning goes. Right now they have a window unit that is being used for AC. So again, I'll be coming up with bid specs on that to do that work. Ed Dearman is going to be helping me with that. He has original pictures of the building and I would like to bring the outside of the building back to its original state. So I've been talking to Charles and the clerk and also council. We have in reserve, there is a fund of $1.3 million. I don't intend to use all of those funds, but I would like to use a portion of it to get these jobs done. I think the time for us to strike is now and get this done. It's with all this money we have in reserve, we should be able to take a small portion of it and take care of these buildings. And I would greatly appreciate if the board would support me in these endeavors. So that's my fire department report. As far as the ambulance goes, in the month of July, 2024, we had 100 emergency calls. We had five work nights, one meeting, and one parade for a total man hours of 1,020. And again, the ambulance continues to be busy. They're working together with our police department and our fire department. As you know, the carnival uh, is over now. It was a great success despite the rain. There were record numbers on Saturday. And the fireworks show, I believe, went on for 20 minutes straight. It was outstanding.
So we haven't had any complaints from the public about it. So again, it was a very successful event. So my congratulations to the fire department and all the members that worked very hard to make that a success. So that concludes my reports. That brings us to Trustee Hay, Justice Court, Parks, Open Space, and the Planning Board. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll start with the Justice Court. Um, many of you, some of you have heard me say throughout this past year and years past that we've had decrease in revenues um, through both um, parking and vehicle traffic. Um, I'm sorry, mostly from parking, not from vehicle traffic um, violations. Um, this past month, July, we've had 197 vehicle traffic cases opened, um, one criminal, one civil, uh, and three code violations. Um, what's really impressive about what's happened in the last two months, both June and July, is that um, the parking cases, the parking cases have, opened, have increased dramatically. Um, almost 1,800 tickets were written in June, and it looks like, and I have to verify because these numbers came in late today, almost 3,000 in July. If this is accurate, we've reached the level we reached in all of last year in parking violations in the last, you know, basically in these last two months. I just want to verify those numbers are accurate before we lock them in. But in terms of dollars for June, at least, um, June revenues were $148,000, $915, which was the largest single month we've had in the village ever, um, at least for the last decade, um, except for one month during um, the COVID year. So so it looks like the parking numbers have gone up dramatically. Again, to your point, the TCOs are doing a fantastic job. The police are out there supporting them as well as needed. Um, you still have people doing U-turns on Main Street in the parking lots, in the parking spaces, but at least they're being talked to by the TCOs and, and, and when seen by you know, traffic officer or by, by the police, they're ticketed. Um, but the TCOs have a difficult job. It's been a very busy summer. Um, but the volumes of tickets have gone up significantly, certainly in June, and we'll verify the July numbers. If they are as they appear to be, um, it'll, it'll mean a significant increase in revenues from the traffic court um, this year. Um, for parks and open spaces, um, later in the agenda, you'll see, you can all see that there are three resolutions in the action items. Two are to, um, two are based on our RFPs we sent out back in March of this year for environmental engineering and traffic engineering services. Um, we only received two responses from those RFPs in May of this year, both from our incumbent consultants, Nelson Pope and Voorhees and Cameron Engineering. Um, we were a little disappointed with that. We were hoping we were gonna get more participation by other engineering firms. And we spent the last few months discussing internally, talking to other engineering firms, talking to other towns um, about um, what can we do to solicit more interest um, in addition, many of you know that um, on June 17th, Suffolk County gave a presentation for um, a traffic safety and improvement study for um, Sag Harbor Bridgehampton Turnpike all the way through Brickfield <clears throat> Road, Jermaine Avenue, Main Street intersection. Um, so um, we have um, reached out to them, Trustee Kane did, um, to Ann Welker, um, the Department of Public Works for Suffolk County. Um, and expressed our interest in working with them on a solution, especially for the area around the intersection of Brook Hill Road, Main Street and Jermaine Avenue. Um, we've also talked to the parks, um, Nash Park Board. Um, I sit on the Mac Park, Nash Park, I'm a liaison to the Mash Park Board. Um, Rachel D is the president. We've had many conversations tomorrow. The Mash Park Board will meet again to discuss um, the work that Suffolk County has proposed. They've already had several meetings on it. Uh, MASH Park has initially um, said that they're willing to consider um, changing the entrance to the park, not removing the archway um, that exists now there. That's a great, you know, historic piece, but changing the egress and entrance for the park um, to make it a little safer to come in and out of there with whatever design um, is come up with for the intersection of Brick Hill Road, Jermaine and Main Street and, and the Turnpike. Um, so we're hoping, um, and so in addition, what we did, we, as I said, we met with traffic engineering and um, environmental consultants in July and talked to the towns in July. Um, what you see in the action items one and two is we are rejecting the RFP responses we got in May from the engineering firms. 
um, and we're issuing a new RFQ. The distinction between the two is that the RFQ is really just a request for qualifications, and we're hoping to qualify a number of engineering firms um, to work with us um, um, for both traffic, consulting, surveying, a variety of issues that we have a need for in the village. Um, and, um, and the turnaround for this will be relatively short, three weeks. So we, we expect to get responses by mid-September. Um, we based it off of one of the other towns, one of the neighboring towns, um, and um, they got a, a strong response from it. Um, that was East Hampton Town. We also um, expect um, to get a similarly strong response um, for that. Um, and then our hope is that working with Nash Park and the village in general um, to um, engage sometime this fall um, an engineering firm to help us with traffic design for Mash Park, that, that intersection plus Mash Park. Um, there's, a, there's problems, yeah. obviously. I mean, that's an understatement. I, I, this weekend, the last couple of weeks, coming out of the village on Upper Main Street, I, I've been stopped at in front of the Whaling Museum. Yep. That's how bad it is. I couldn't get out of Howard. I live on Howard oh, you Street. Know, you can't couldn't get, get out of Howard Street. I turned around and came back. And then it's coming down, it's crazy. Postpone. And, and then traffic coming, went it's, it's north into the village. How do so you get out of your street? I you mean, can't. So well, that's a problem. The other problem is 114. We now have people that are cutting across when the traffic comes into the village. They're taking Union Street. Mm -hmm. They're taking Sage Street now. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And they're, they're doing these cut across. Union Germain. Street now has become. Germain. Jermaine. Jermaine Jermaine's the first one. Thoroughfare. Right. Yeah. Jermaine, Union, and even Harrison. Yep. <laughs> so they're using every cut over they can to get through the village. Um, and not always understanding, you know, the residences, their the residential neighborhoods they're driving through uh -huh. and being sensitive right. to that. And just, just to make it clear to the public and everybody, the TCOs, uh, Chief Drake, twice a day, they are manning. It takes multiple TCOs. People think it only takes one officer or one TCO to do this, but it takes multiple TCOs, even a police officer with them, to control that Bay Street, 114, yep. going, going down towards Main Street, coming over the bridge. It's not just one TCO. I swear to God, if I see on Facebook again yeah. somebody requesting a TCO at that intersection, I'm going to go to their house and explain to them how this works. <laughs> That's there, not how it works. There are five crosswalks involved. Yep. There's five crosswalks. So one of the, the ideas, and I'm just putting this out there, really need to work on that walkway. Get that walkway complete that goes from Windmill Beach under the bridge into to the cut park. out that traffic. Uh, that, and then we can eliminate that, that crosswalk. crosswalk at the bottom of the bridge. Yep. Eliminate it. Yep. People are just walking around anyway. Why not go through the park under the and bridge? And people are paying through. attention. They're sort of wandering. Yeah, and they'll just so, cut in front of cars knowing that the cars will stop. Yeah. It's, um, it's becoming a problem. It's foot traffic, it's traffic. It's becoming very difficult to manage, to say the least. And I'm aware of it. We're all aware of it. All of us here on the board. Disagree with any of this observation. <laughs> yeah. I've also confronted uh, two cars heading the wrong way, one on the way to this meeting, coming through the post office the wrong way. <laughs> and each person said, I know, I know out the window uh, and the other was coming down the side of the American hotel that in, was that Glover's alley? Yeah. Yeah. So I was heading in the right direction. So I go on the other way. In. I said, you're going the wrong way. And she goes, I know. <laughs> yeah. So it's not even pretending uh, that it was a mistake. And there's nothing, I mean, we have the TCOs out there working, but it's, it's everywhere. You know, it's just, the, the, we would have to be wall-to-wall -wall TCOs to control it. It's, it, it's difficult. Reminds me of the old joke. You say, yeah. officer, I was only going one way. Yeah. Right. 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 Which way? Yeah. So, but they have, I have seen three times, three separate instances where a police officer has pulled a people, person going the wrong way into the uh, post office and wrote the right. ticket. Three times I saw it. Mm -hmm. So that's, they're getting... We should get those spikes they have when you return your car to the airport. That if you back over the spikes, they'll take your tires out. Or rent a car. Yes. So if you go the wrong way down Glover's Alley, you can afford your tires. Sorry to interrupt, but no, we're no, just no. venting. We're all venting we, here. We, we appreciate, yeah, no, we appreciate we're just, the color. Yes. <laughs> we're all venting. And so that's, yeah. so that's you know, w once we qualify these engineering firms, mm -hmm. we, can, we can get them to help us with some design ideas for 
all of the all of the problems that were just discussed, frankly. Um, and we can, my hope is we will have multiple respondents in addition to Nelson Pope and Voorhees and, and Cam, Cameron, and we can essentially try them out too and, yep. and get their get their expertise um, to match our, our needs. Um, I, I would just, I also think it's important to note in addition to all the volume of activity that's going on in this community um, this summer, um, we are still, you know, short staffed. We had uh, at the last meeting. One of the other things on the agenda action items is um, to rescind, I think, an offer to a deputy treasurer. Um, that deputy treasurer um, we appointed at the last meeting um, rescinded her acceptance of our offer and is not coming here. So we are again without a deputy treasurer. We've been just kind of short staff all year. Um, and um, her main reason for rescind was for not accepting the job was the trade parade. She said it was an hour and a half coming from West Hampton. We are discussing part, at least part-time home work for her, right? We, we offered her that, she rejected it. She rejected it. Oh, she rejected it. Yeah. Um, so th that was a stated reason. There might've been other reasons. Might've been other reasons, but yeah. that was a yeah. factor. Um, so, you know, again, we're, we're again short staff. We've been short staffed all year um, and the workload is significant. So that I just wanna make sure that the public's aware of that. Um, because with that, things happen. Is, is it legal to have in this in that position any an individual working from home? Yes, it is okay. I mean, they probably have to come in sometimes. We would want them to come okay. in sometimes. At least yeah. that door is. That and, is and that's possible. we've been we've been we've we've kept that door open to our applicants. Correct. It's been an option. Yeah. And we need to talk to the other communities and see if we all want to set up a communal satellite office west of the Shinnecock Canal oh, good idea. where people could go work like a like a shared space to see if we could. I, I think we're just going to have to try and we work off practice this. in a way that we haven't really we have to think outside the box. Think outside the box. And maybe it's not just us. Yep. It's everybody. Everybody's having the same It's like issues. a WeWork shared space office building with facilities. So that And the further east we go, the harder it is. But that's that's what we're facing as a village now. Can we hire like a large accounting firm that would take us on as a client. We're, we're you know, the, the treasurer has reached out and is talking to accounting firms to help supplement the work of the time. So, you know, not accounting, not audit firms, but outsourced accounting firms, right? Right. 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 Providing right. services to various clients. So well, that's a possibility. We're talking yeah. about those. Yeah. yeah. Is that it? With your report? That's it. Okay. So that concludes. Deputy Mayor Hayes report that brings us to Trustee Korish with the sewer department, village grants, and zoning board of appeals. Okay, we'll start off with the uh, sewer department. Uh, <clears throat> Norton usual reports, the total gallons 3.4 million gallons for uh, the month of July. We removed 40,000, almost 50,000 50, gallons of sludge by Hampton Septic. Um, our DMO reports went uh, forward on 0805. Suffolk County DHS um, Health Services next next inspection is ten fifteen. Um, New York State DC inspection is always open. We had no complaints. Um, summary of operations: uh, Suffolk County DHS inspection on seven oh nine. Well, seven oh nine was satisfactory in all regards. That's the highest rating you can get from the county. There's no merit badges or anything. If you're satisfactory, you're good. The wastewater treatment plant running well. We're using four basins out of five. Um, and Al well, uh, legislator Ann Welker had a walkthrough tour 07 on 26th of July. And the flow rate, uh, the increase from June to July was 831,000 gallons. Um, so that shows that, uh, you know, the team down there are doing a great job. Um, keep operating under all of our permitted levels um, and dealing with the rise and fall of the inflow in, in a good and no mention of uh, grease traps this month, which is you no know, uses good news in that department. So we'll move on to, um, before we get to the grants, I just want a quick word on paid parking. Uh, year to date, the, uh, we've, we've taken in $68,528. That's May, June, and July. It was $47.75 in May, $20,749 in June, and $43,000 in July, which is really close to, I think we had 43000 in July last year. That's pretty interesting. Um, out of the 68,000, we had 2,000, around 2,500 came from um, from, Haven, from Havens Beach, 2,516. Um, 
We just received the signs for parking um, in the uh, gas ball lot, and they're going to go up tomorrow. And so the gas ball lot will be paid parking starting tomorrow. Just want to make sure everybody knows that. And Meadow Street parking lot. And Meadow Street parking lot, I beg your pardon. And Meadow Street. directly behind IGA, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, from grants, we've had a busy month in grants, and it's um, we're in sort of a... An interesting, uh, interesting situation. We've been looking at the, the grants we applied for this month is the LWRP phase two. Um, we submitted to New York State a grant request for $90,000 because the state grants the um, this consolidated funding closes uh, 731 the end of July. So we, we, we applied for that. We also submitted an application. We're looking at phase two of soaring, which would continue the soaring south the expansion, South Main Street, and those side streets, is, there's a documentation available if anybody wants, but the grant request there was for 4.8 million from the state. So that was, uh, that was submitted. There'll be a local match of 1.2 million that will go, hopefully we'll be applying to, um, to, the, to, to Southampton CPF as we have done before for the local match. We also have a grant that we've applied for that is on is a walk on. Uh, we were running some numbers all day today to make sure that we could it would it would, would fit with the criteria. It's quite complicated because we're transferring one grant to another and using it as a local match. I wasn't sure until very late in the day whether we had our numbers um, aligned. Apparently, we do. So it's a walk on. So we can talk about that in a little and a little bit later. Uh, when it comes up as a resolution. And finally, we went out to bid, or we're in the process of bidding um, area KNL, which is phase one for the sewers. Um, there's been significant interest, I think, or you know, we should be fair to say, is the number of companies who picked up packages. We're expecting to have the closing date, I think, is September 10th. September 5th, I'm sorry. I think it's um, the 10th. So I mean, but either way, we'll open the we'll open the there'll be a public opening of all bids, and then we will. Cameron will um, look at them all in great detail and come back with recommendations. So that's pretty exciting. We heard from our, um, from Charles earlier that the financing is aligned and uh, we're still looking for a, man, a village project manager. We're having the same issues as we're having in, in, in every um, position, trying to fill these positions. It's, it is becoming very difficult, um, but we're pressing ahead nonetheless. Um, also, we're talking to East Hampton CPF, who, we hesitated and resisted putting a grant application in there until uh, for this round of, C of their uh, CPF uh, water quality funds until the grants, until the bids come in. And then we'll really know where we stand. I mean, everything up to now has been, you know, best efforts theoretical based on similar projects on Long Island that have either been completed recently or underway. We'll see how accurate all of our uh, estimates are. And once we have those numbers back, we'll be in a great position, you know, fingers crossed that they come in under what we've allocated, uh, but you never know. Uh, we're in a funny time when it comes to inflation. So hopefully when those grants come in, it'll give us clarity. So as we move ahead with phase two and even phase one, we'll be doing it with real, real, real world knowledge as opposed to our, our best estimates and Cameron's best estimates. So um, that concludes my report there. Thank you. Oh, there were two things I'd like to add um, on the grant situation. We were awarded or we were certified as a pro housing community by the state of New York. And I just would like to thank our clerk, Kate Lacasio, our building department, Tin and Bruce, Carrie and Doris, everybody helped to get this paperwork in and submitted and we are now a certified pro housing community, which opens up many grant opportunities for us. We had a meeting with uh, Governor Hochul, a, a handful of the East End mayors. Uh, they had an agenda that they wanted to speak about. All the governor wanted to speak about was housing. And she turned right to me sitting there and congratulated Sag Harbor for being a pro housing community and said, I have all these carrots to give out but in order to get them, you have to be in this program. So I just wanted to congratulate the clerk and our staff for getting that work done. The other thing that we're working on, we, we did speak to Jen about it, uh, but Kate has done most of the work on it. 
working with myself is a grant through NYSERDA, mm -hmm. which will, what we're looking to do is to expand the electric car service that Rove provides to our fire protection and, and ambulance protest, protection district, which is basically the 11963 area code. And what this would do, this money would allow them to expand, to expand and provide a service to those people, the residents in those communities to come into Sag Harbor Village, do into the business district, do their bill, business, and then they would drive them home free of charge. That's so it would fantastic. be a shuttle service free of charge if we get the grant. So it was due, I believe it's due the 15th. We've, we've submitted what we have to submit. So fingers crossed. Is that a state grant? That's a state grant through NYSERDA. So what kind of vehicles? They're electric, the electric what vehicles. It, it, this grant is for green transportation. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole uh, motivation behind it. So Sag Harbor has uh, done their homework on that and has submitted for that grant. Great. That's fantastic. It'll help with so parking. It would help with parking. That's part of an, in, in our application. We said that we have obviously a parking situation, a traffic situation. If you're somebody that lives in Noyak and you want to come into the village and see a movie or go shopping, you can get and that just service. An on -demand service. It's an on-demand service. So I just want, just want to make it, you're aware of that, what we're doing. And there, well, we will get everybody up to speed on this pro-housing sure. community so that we can access the portal. And... Okay, so Jen already knows about it. That brings us to Trustee Plum and the Public Works Board of Historic Preservation and Architectural Review. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor, Highway Department continues patch and repair roads as needed. Uh, road shoulders have been repaired as needed, particularly after the heavy rainfalls we've had. Roof has been replaced on the central garage building. That was a new roof. There was an emergency re roof repair at the old fire museum building thanks to a raccoon who decided to take up residence there. Um, uh, painting of all the crosswalks and stop lines continues with those green, those are good, the green, they're very visible uh, crosswalks. Water and all flower baskets daily, cutting of grass, parks, Havens Beach. Garbage containers are being picked up twice daily on Main Street due to heavy usage. Extra garbage and litter picked up has been performed in special events, fireworks, and holiday weekends when they get all piled up. Uh, several catch basins have been cleaned and jetted. This is in addition to a bunch we did last month. Uh, tree brush continues. Uh, uh, on streets, the uh, I, the fire department whistles were scheduled. Uh, the replacement or repair at Brick Hill and Murray Hill Firehouse in yep. uh, were re repaired or uh, re uh, replaced. And uh, the harbor master sits at they sit at the harbor master's installation of the welcome to Sag Harbor sign on the Great Water Wall at the entrance to the harbor. Um, I also have a. Um, I wrote a monthly report here from the EAC, the Environmental Action Committee. Um, the charging station netted roughly more than 1,500 in July, roughly comparable to 2023. I think that's what you just said, too. Um, the composting table at the farmer's market has diverted almost 500 pounds of food scraps from the transfer station to an organic farm. It's a lot of work. Um, the first violation of the recently passed tree preservation code is in Justice Court. Evaluation of a suitable landscape plan for living metal like remediation is being discussed. Um, this is a big one. And I don't want to weigh in either way, but um, I just point out this law took seven years to pass. And this was kind of the worst case scenario of what could happen. And uh, the two major trees were cut down on a double wide lot, and she, and I understand that the 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 claim that was that the health department told her she had to move the trees. Well, anybody who's been to the health department knows that you can relocate if you want to avoid big objects and things like that. You can do that within their guidelines, which are typically in, they want the the septic in the front of the property just so it's accessible. So this is a big one. And um, I don't know how to say this, but I do hope that um, this is exactly why we put 
there was a thousand dollar fine, which is a slap on the wrist. And there, there was another that we have to replace total uh, width, breadth width of the trees. Uh, seven feet of trees were cut there. And to do that would be 21 six inch trees, just for, for example. And six is pretty big. You get to eight, they get much more expensive. And 12 is too big. 12 is a 10 inch ball, it's eight feet deep. I mean, that's very difficult to do. Anyway, um, I'm just hoping that we went through all this work and this was the point and this person's building a nine bathroom, five bedroom house on a double lot. And she took down, one of the trees was on village property. This is, I don't know how wor much worse this can get. So I don't even know exactly who I'm talking to here other than this is why we passed this law. And it was, and this is not a, a longtime village residence. There are two little houses that were belong, that did belong to longtime residents are going to be torn down. And this is exactly what the law was intended for. So I just hope that um, some, we can make an example of this person, not make an example of it, but. I'm not supposed to comment. Yeah, no, well, here, right. careful, this, this careful. Is that's a matter before a matter before the courts. And, yeah. It's pending. Right. It's going to be adjudicated there. We've given them the tools. The process take its yeah, course. that's yes. all I'm saying. Is we're giving, they're yeah. aware of the rule. Thank We've you. given them the tools, and the court will interpret. You know the situation. All right, the smaller roof panel for the STP is in progress. We we'll have to have it finished by September 30th. Earn us a fifty thousand dollar grant, and um, we had a conference call with Ashraw Energy Audit. Uh, energy on the village hall that was earned by the climate smart communities. It's a program that New York state has. They come and do energy audits of your buildings for free and they make suggestions for improvements. And that was, that's free based on the fact that we were a, we earned the climate smart communities rating. And that's my report. Thank you. That brings us to trustee Kane for the building department, Harbor and docks and the Harbor committee. Okay, great. Thank you. So the building department um, continues to be busy. Um, just to give you an idea of the revenue, um, revenue that was brought in in the month of July um, was only uh, a little bit over 9,000, um, which was only about 40% of July in 2024. But year to date, um, we are, running at a pace of 48% of last year. So um, right now we're running at the exact number year to date is $619,603. So um, we've got, um, we've got, you know, good buffer and, you know, it's always month to month. You can't really predict how the different months are going to come in. Uh, with regard to number of building permits that were issued in July, there were 32. Um, 25 rental permits were issued in July, bringing us up to a total of 120. One of the things that um, we will be talking about is a new resolution with regard to the rental permit. So we'll, we'll cover that um, later tonight. Um, there were 13 certificate of occupancies and 35 notices of violations. Um, you know, just to give you an idea of how busy um, the fire marshal is, you know, that's our code enforcement. 38 complaints were taken and addressed, 34 fire safety inspections, 35 notices of violation um, were issued. And then there's just uh, reviews for special event applications, tents, um, systems testing, fire investigations, um, but, you know, it continues to be busy. There were three tree removal inspections um, to know that they are on top of things. Uh, and then in North Haven, um, we still do play a role there. There were three complaints in North Haven, two notices of violations, and um, six follow-ups of the investigations. So we continue to be a partner there and, and play a, continue, uh, a role for them. And then with regard to the docks, um, July was a very busy month. Uh, to give you the revenue, uh, we took in a total of $450,992 for the month uh, in 2024. That compares to 
2023. So um, considerably higher, more than two times ahead. And then for year to date, uh, we are running at 2 million 120 odd um, versus last year, uh, a million and a half. So we're about 37% ahead of last year. Um, so it continues to be uh, very busy. And just to go over all the um, work going on in the harbor, we really are very grateful that uh, Harbor Master um, Bori and Durier worked closely with the Southampton Town and the Southampton Board and the trustees along with their Marine Patrol where Southampton had an extra pump boat, a 23 foot pump boat that they were no longer using. They actually had offered it to Shelter Island and then Shelter Island didn't need it. Um, so we were able, they actually donated it to us. Um, we had to do some work because the boat had been out of service for a little bit over a year. It went into service on July 26th and we will have three senior members of the dock staff will rotate as operators. And why this was really important is we just saw uh, a very large increase in demand um, for the pump out boat. And particularly over the beginning of July and mm -hmm. July 4th weekend, um, pump out service boat was working literally from six in the morning till 11 at night. You know, we can't do that seven days a week. Um, so do you know this, how much that's up over previous years? Yeah. I um, know that I, I'll tell you the exact numbers because I okay, did. Sorry, didn't um, well, I'll tell you right now. It's okay. So as of July 31st, um, there was 146, 940 gallons, um, of Marine waste, um, that went in at Marine park that compares 146, call it 147 to round it up. That compares to 118 the year prior. Um, so that's a, you know, yeah. yeah. And so having this extra pump boat is really important. We've also offered the service for people who uh, want to pump out their own boat. They will let Harbor Masters know we will have a dock hand there to help. It hasn't really been taken much advantage of. I think there's only been not even a handful of people because people are realizing they can do it. Now that we have this extra pump boat, there'll probably be less of a need for people doing it themselves. If someone does want to do it themselves, there will be a dock hand on hand to help them so that we just make sure everything is done properly. So a lot of um, good changes. People seem to be responding very well. Um, now I'll go over. Um, so first of all, just very grateful to Southampton Town Board and Southampton Town Trustees uh, for approving that. Um, on July 26th, Sag Harbor, Harbor Masters assisted with the Sag Harbor Yacht Club with the fireworks, which means starting early in the morning, they escorted the barge in, set up all the safety zone, made sure and police that pretty much all day. As we all know, the fireworks weren't really very visible. However, we still need all the safety um, and precautions that were taken. And both Southampton Town and East Hampton Town uh, Marine Patrols assisted in the evening um, during the time of the fireworks attempting to be shot off, shall we say. So thank goodness we had the carnival and there was much better they were, they were excellent. for everyone to enjoy. Fire Department, Sag Harbor Fire Department also assisted um, during the 4th of July, or actually July 6th, to be exact. Um, reservations remain very strong, as you can see from, or from the numbers that I just reported. Um, and then to give you an idea, the outer mooring field, uh, which we're playing, paying very close attention to, um, there were 29 um, checks done during the month. Uh, those are marine checks. Um, the average number of vessels moored during the month were 33.6, vessels anchored were nine, and then on the private property mornings, uh, it averaged about two and a half. Um, so those are the numbers that we're watching. In the inner mooring, the dock personnel continue to do all the daily checks uh, in the inner mooring field as well. 
for the marine sanitary device inspections. Um, 18 inspections were conducted by the Harbor Masters during the month. Mm. And then on July 26th, the Harbor Masters, along with Southampton Town Marine Patrol, um, uh, New York State DEC officers, and they conducted an additional 12 inspections. During that joint operation, there were two summons in, summonses that were issued for vessels having their Y valves open. There was no discharge observed. However, um, those are really the first um, summonses that have been uh, issued. There were total inspections for 2024 were at 96. Um, and that includes vessels that are in the Cove, um, the yacht clubs, both East and West, Sag Harbor um, Transit Dock, Waterfront Marina, Sag Harbor Yacht Club, um, Sag Harbor uh, Yacht Yard, and then the Long Wharf and the B Dock, as well as the Outer Mooring Field. So um, we're being very vigilant on doing all of those and um, seems to be very, very well received by the captains or the owners um, when the Harbor Masters go on board. Um, and then uh, last but not least, you know, there were three fuel spills that were um, where we were called to service. They weren't large, fortunately. There's a couple of disabled um, vessels, disabled uh, jet ski, um, and two swimmers in distress. Both of those, uh, we know that story. Um, and then there was one 9-11 um, crash alert that happened uh, late in the evening. So these guys are on call, you know, kind of every hour of the day. Um, and that ends my report there. And then I, I just wanted to mention um, for the Harbor Committee, uh, one thing that has uh, really been making sure that we are paying attention to the wetland permits to make sure that the homeowners that put those, you know, what their plan is, that there's a three year period that they have to do all their buffer zones and all the proper vegetation and um, that they are coming in, shaking your head, they're coming in and making sure that those plans are being inspected. Correct? Not exactly, but that's a good try. I mean, they have to, you want me to speak to that? I, well, I want, um, well, I, I think we'll hold that for, all. we'll hold that for comments after the reports. Yeah. She looked at me to ask me a question. Yeah, right. I mean, I think this is a good, this is a good step that we're moving in the right direction, staying on top of it um, and making sure, and it seems to be well, very well received when they come and report. Is that the end of your report? Yes. I just wanted to mention that the passing of Bruce Tate, who was very instrumental, I believe he was a founding member of the Harbor Committee. And my condolences and the village's condolences to, to his family. It was, it was a loss for our village, a man who, you know, performed service on the Harbor Committee and was, I believe, one of, I'm Over many almost years. certain he was one of the founding members of the Harbor Committee. So sad to hear his, about his passing. Uh, I need a motion to accept the reports. Move it. Motion by Deputy Mayor Hay, second. I'll second. Seconded by <clears throat> Trustee Corso, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. That brings us now to our public comments. 15 minute public session. Input for comments and questions. Limit three minutes per speaker concerning the treasurer's report or any of the department reports. Marianne, would you like to? I just, uh, Marianne, Eddie, 96 Hampton Street. I have one quick question. There's so much going on, but one of the things that I hope doesn't totally fall off the table is that walk to the park that both uh, Environmental Advisory Committee had talked about and the open space people talked about. And if there's any update on that or anything that I don't know. I'm public. sorry, the walk to which park? Pardon me? The walk to Mash Park? Right. I oh, just, yeah. Yeah, so there is there is something going on. There are a number of things going on with that. But one of the things, it certainly is not off the table. It's not off the radar screen. Um, I believe that's also one of the two things are going on. One is that we're hopeful that this RFQ will, will allow us to bring on a traffic consultant sometime in September or October 
to help us with that. But there's already been, I believe, Kate, you can help with this, a grant awarded for sidewalks on Germain Avenue. Yes. Um, oh. Well, it was part of the Suffolk County Community Development. We get funding each year and we had uh, $45,000. So we went to them and asked to do curb cuts and the sidewalk along the area of the cemetery. Um, and they approved it. So that will be happening any day. Well. But there's also some work that's being done by National Grid. Is that right? Yes, but I, I don't want to delay the project. I mean, it, to me, we've waited so long for this. We need to strike while we can and get the sidewalks done. Because I, I don't want to wait for National or PSE and G to come through before we do that. If we can do it sooner, I'd rather do it sooner than later. But it might turn out that we have to do it after the road yeah, is paved. Figure out. So, That's great. Um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make that a prerequisite to do it. Um, I just want to tweak what you said about the harbor committee. So, right now the way it is is that um, when the harbor committee issues a permit, part of that is a planting plan that has various buffers that have to be planted as designated <clears throat> and agreed upon. So before a property can get a certificate of occupancy, it has to be checked off that that plan has been executed as it was designed and permitted. So that happens kind of right up front. And then there's a three year look back after that point where the landscape architect who put it in has to um, attest that in fact everything is reasonably alive and well. I think it's like 85% or something. And if right. there's been a lot of die off, then plants have to be reaped. That Yeah, and then, and then I, I think that's the positive part that they're, Pardon me? they're it's great that you, the two different applicants have come and we said that they're uh, staying on top of it, but do feel that they have the time to. We're getting the reports in. Right. Yeah, so that it's sort of, that looked to me to be a new success. To see those reports coming in. I think also having it tied into getting a certificate of occupancy is really important. Otherwise, we just sit up there and we're just flapping our gums. And we don't know if anybody's ever like actually done what we've permitted. So now it dovetails into certificate of occupancy. And I think that's really an important loop that was closed. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Hi, Elizabeth Gilbert asking about the comp plan. We just we just received the uh, paperwork, the contract from New York State. Myself and Trustee Corris are going to work together mm -hmm. on putting the committee together. We did get an outline from them. We did. About, about as far as what the qualification should be for those members. So myself and Trustee Corris will start to discuss who we think should be on that committee. We have an idea of how the committee should function. So you'll, you're going to see some things starting to move on that. Yeah, Great. we're in a good position for that right. to get going. It's a good, good fall project. Yes, and um, also I'd like to bring up, I know it's a touchy subject, but Marsden Street, um, at the um, special hearing of the HPARB, the property owner told us that the building inspector had gone out with an arborist and that they were going to leave eight trees on the entire property, which... In my opinion, that's almost tan that's tantamount to clear cutting, and I I'm not sure what can be done about that. Um, but oh. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Lockler. Oh, we have two people on. Okay. Uh, computer as well on the TV screens as well. Actually, sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, Stephen Lockler, sixty-eight Whitney Road, Sacramento. I just have a few questions and comments. It's, I think it's it's very good and well overdue that you're putting out the RFP for the additional environmental services. What's disturbing is the lackluster response. And I'm just curious to know, uh, is, is are those RFPs limited to a certain geographic area? And the reason that I ask that is because a large part of the environmental consultant responsibility is the CEQA process. And that process is a state process and it's not limited to any municipality. So one would think that there was that, you know, the RFP for consultants 
could be expanded well beyond the Long Island area or the Sac Harbor area and go into other areas in New York State where they may be willing, or you may have a better response to that because it's, it's really very essential that the village have provide people with alternatives. I agree. Okay, and the, it's just seems that it's taking a very long time and through no fault of yours. I know that Mayor Gardella wanted to, you know, change the wording of the RFP to perhaps make it a little bit more concise so that these companies would be able to respond more, you know, more intelligently to what it is that you're requesting. But perhaps an expansion of the geographic area and, uh, you know, some of those responses, if you tell them that you're actually seeking, uh, for the most part, the CEPA review, um, which is required for most of these projects, especially for the planning board, the, actually it is only required for the CEPA board, that might be helpful. Anything that you can do to move that along because there are certain people such as myself that would like to have opportunities with um, other than the existing personnel. Thank you. So we can, we'll find out very quickly. Well, we're, um, yeah. we're, it's on the agenda for tonight to, to start that. And what we're opening up, we think will get us a number of responses by September um, from a number of firms, all Long Island based, frankly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is there a reason for, that you limit? I, I think it was, not a reason we limit it, but I think our preference would be if we can get Long Island firms, that would be the best. Um, there, there, are, there are a plethora of Long Island engineering and, and environmental and traffic consulting firms. And, and the fashioning this as an RFQ allows us to um, be more selective on a project by project basis of who we use to try out different firms if we get multiple firms to respond to the RFQ, as opposed to an RFP, which is much more targeted in terms of specific projects. Um, so, so our hope is this will give us more respondents, get us more respondents, but we'll find out very quickly. We'll know within a month. But I would also say, as we've looked at different potential companies, engineering firms, they may be located here and do work here, but they also do work in New York City and in different other areas. Like, there are larger firms as well as smaller firms. That would be Most of the engineering firms have been bought by national firms, frankly, anyway, even yeah. on Long Island. So, but we'd still like, we, we would like a Long Island presence because there are a number of unique aspects. Right. Secret is just one of them for, that we need to look at. I know, but that is... That's it's an important a, one. That's, that's it's an important great, one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, there's so many things that come under that umbrella. Absolutely. Have that expertise. Right. And, yeah. they, and they all do have it. All right, I'm looking forward to that. Thanks very much. Wasn't the objection, this might be a good point, the objection to the original RFPs was that it was, it was too restrictive. I don't know if there's an objection. We just didn't get as many respondents. Right. We, so now we're trying, no yeah. objective. So we're broadening it up and letting them bring their qualifications to us. Yeah. I'm sure the original firms will respond as well. So exactly. it'll just be a bigger pool, which I think it'll be beneficial. That's the goal, right? Anthony. Do you want to, yeah, let me just go, uh, to, who do we have Anthony on? Anthony Yeah, I, know, I see Anthony. Go ahead. Let's hear from Douglas first. And then I'll get to you, Anthony. Let's hear from Douglas first, please. Hi, it's Douglas Newby, 244 Madison. Um, first of all, congratulations. There's obviously a huge amount going on, and I uh, thought this was a really useful uh, um, description of uh, what's happening. And uh, I will say in terms of the RFP versus RFQ, in my experience, uh, getting people to... Uh, submit R RFQs is an awful lot easier than RFPs. It's, it's a much easier process for the uh, group making the submission. So I think that's a really, really smart way of uh, going about it. So uh, congratulations on that. One question on the treasurer's report. Um, has uh, any update on the uh, uh, audit for the uh, March 31st, 2023 financial statements? I'll have Charles answer that for you, Douglas. He spoke to me about it, yes. Yeah, so the update is the auditors are finishing their work. I expect they will issue their report within the next couple of weeks. Fully expect for the next meeting, and then we'll have a clear picture of, uh, this is the audit for the fiscal year ended May 23. Yeah. So I think okay. we're just a week or so away from that. Uh, okay. Thank okay. I'd answer that for you, Douglas. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, Anthony? Right. Keep 
good evening. That's a new urban door, 68 Union Street. Um, so I guess I want to talk a little bit about the traffic. I know Bob and I have had a little bit of a lively discussion about that. Um, and I sent you my little diagram of ideas. Um, but at any rate, I think, first of all, um, what prompted my original um, email to you folks in um, July was just that completely chaotic Saturday. And what had happened was, uh, I think it was a combination of the antique fair and soldier ride being on the same day. And I think that, you know, to give soldier ride some credit, I've noticed over the last, uh, over time, that has really got become a much better organized event in terms of minimizing disruption. But I think is it just having that in the antique fair on the same day was just too much. And I think when you approve, you know, every meeting you have this list of approvals of, of um, events, you know, just look very carefully at what's being scheduled on the same date, especially in uh, July and August to avoid, you know, a situation like that. And what happened, what turned what would have been just a, a bad situation into a potentially catastrophic situation on that day was just one single legally parked car. It was like right in front of my neighbor's house. It was there all morning into early afternoon. And it just had people trying to get around it, driving up onto sidewalks, people honking their horn, horns all day, all morning long. It was just crazy. Um, so there's that. Um, another issue with um, another thing issue with Union Street um, just today. Another sign got knocked over again. And this is those large vehicles trying to negotiate that turn. And it's not just the big trucks. It's also um, trucks, smaller trucks with trailers, like landscaping trucks and um, um, construction trucks. And I've the two incidents that I personally actually witnessed, I didn't actually witness what happened today. I just saw the afternoon path. Uh, the two situations that I've actually witnessed, one was a couple of years ago uh, hitting the telephone pole and almost knocked it over. And um, uh, earlier this year, hitting like, one of the signs on Union Street. Both those weren't big trucks. They were pickup trucks uh, with trailers with lawnmowers on the back that hit them. And I don't think the drivers even noticed that they hit. Um, they just sped away. So, um, you know, I think one, I, I put in a lot of suggestions there for signage and markings and, and things like that. But I think one thing that is important here is that uh, no vehicles over five ton um, sign, it's hidden by the telephone pole. And I think maybe if you use that, uh, this opportunity of the, the street sign being knocked down, maybe when that gets replaced, you also move that no vehicles over five tons in, onto that street sign. No, of course, that's not going to stop every vehicle from uh, that shouldn't be from making that turn. But even if like a 10 or 15 percent reduction will improve, the, I think, the quality of life there. So right. I mean, that's just a quick sort of thing. Um, one final observation um, it, that I'll make is that I've actually noticed and this is, a, I think, a credit to this TCOs and the um, and the uh, police that traffic along um, Division Street doesn't seem to be backing up as far as it used to in previous summers. It's not coming, it doesn't seem to be backing up all the way past my house, which it has. Now, it's a different matter on Union Street itself, because I think a lot of people are just making that cut off, and now I'm seeing traffic uh, for the first time being backed up all the way from Main Street all the way to Division Street, the entire length of Union Street going westbound. Um, so that's a new for this summer, but it, um, at least the traffic on Division Street does seem to be improving a little bit. So I think that's a good sign of what some organizations You know where it's going, it's winding up on Bay Street. Because mm -hmm. I've noticed that myself driving past and the line on division is maybe 12, 10 cars and the yeah. line on Bay Street's 20. I think People they're are taking that back <coughs> Bay Street back way. They think they're going to, it'll be shorter than the 114. Yeah, I used to do that back way myself. And then I kind of quickly realized it's actually just as bad as just staying on uh, yeah. Division Street. But yeah, yeah we're all, I mean, that's another thing yeah. to think about. We're all aware of this, Anthony. We yeah. all, listen, yeah. I sympathize, I live in the village. We all do. Yeah. And we sympathize with what you're saying. We know that's an issue. We're trying to come up with solutions. So we hear you loud and clear. We, I'm grateful for you for giving us some suggestions and we, we take it very seriously. 
Um, I want to have one more point, some completely different matter here. Um, this, but I think it relates a little bit to the sewer system expansion and kind of what some of the target areas should be for the initial phases of this expansion. Um, I'm getting a lot of anecdotal reports from other builders and also my own observations and my own um, uh, um, projects. There is a very serious water table issue going on in Redwood and Clover Street. And I don't mean just in the uh, near near the water. I mean like almost off the main street. We're encountering water uh, cable that is four feet above sea level, um, and this seems to be something that's getting worse, um, more worse, faster than just the like, incremental sea level rise. Something strange seems to be going on with the hydrology there, and I think that's important to keep in mind with existing septic systems that are may a few years ago have been well above. The water table we're now going to be into the water table and you know just that that whole area i think needs some special observation for the sewer yeah. expansion we have discussed our, our um, redwood area as being more suitable for a community-based ia system that would be managed mm -hmm. um but again you know these solutions are years away yeah. you know it's taken us eight years to get to to actually be opening bids in eight days so, but it's something that if you, I don't know if you're familiar with the, with the master plan, it, we do address those areas. Yeah. But if you've noticed something that's, because you're actually out in the field, if you notice something that you find has changed dramatically in a relatively short space of time, that's definitely something we should pay attention to. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's not just me, it's like excavators and people, you know, for doing this are saying this has really been a change that has happened in the last few years that, that has been noticed. Huh. So, interesting. Thank you, Anthony. I'm going to yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to move on. I'm sorry. We only got three minutes. We're supposed to have three minutes, but I have one. Who's the other speaker? Eileen. Hi, good evening. Thank you. Um, uh, I don't know whether to address this question to Deputy Mayor Hay or to Trustee Korsh because it's Justice Court, but also paid parking. I happen to be at Justice Court, not on my own behalf, but as an observer on something. And as you all know, if anyone's ever attended, uh, the first hour is basically tickets, uh, parking tickets. And I noticed both times that I was there that the majority, I, don't, I can't say specific numbers, the majority of tickets were issued on Long Wharf. And the main complaints were lack of reception of the app, you know, to get the app. Mm. Um, the uh, signage was not clear, and many people thought that since the first hour is free, that they didn't have to log into the app. And my understanding was all of that uh, cumulative information the judge took under advisement and said he would pass along to the powers that be. I don't know who that would be, but I'm wondering if there has been some um, relook at those issues for the app on the Long Wharf that seems to affect many people? Um, to not to give you a really short answer, but if you look at the number of successful transactions that take place every year on Long Wharf, it's in the thousands. Um, as you approach Long Wharf, there's a big white line across the street and there are signs at eye level for the driver saying that beyond this point is paid parking. We're always trying to balance sign pollution with information. I think the signs that are on Long Wharf are adequate, and so do thousands of other people because they manage to participate. Um, if people believe that because the first hour is free, then everything should be free, I can't really speak to that. Um, the app is really easy to use. Um, it's not unique to Sag Harbor. I think people have a responsibility to obey our laws, and if they park on Long Wharf, and they somehow managed to run afoul of the parking regulations. Um, if I look at a system where everybody makes the same mistake, then I would assume there's something wrong with the system. But if I look at a system where the vast majority of people are able to participate successfully, um, I have to look at the participation or the problems that people are having or maybe more due to their lack of awareness um, or lack of willingness to participate. I can't really second guess what the judge says. Um, I would imagine that um, 
you know, he'll take all this under consideration. I have not heard from the court about any issues that need to be resolved, but um, I thank you for your observation and sharing it with us. Yes. Um, ironically, or happily, I've never received a ticket in San Carver for the 37 years I've been there, but it did come up um, really case after case. Uh, one other thing I'd like to mention, I personally feel um, that it's very important to attend these these meetings, the board meetings, et cetera. Uh, the exchange of information is really helpful. I had a question about the internal exchange of information. I was at an ARB meeting and I was quite surprised to uh, learn that the ARB was not aware of something that a, uh, when they were evaluating a property was not aware of a case on that property. And I thought that sort of information would be conveyed. But so I, I can't say how internally all of you share that information. I assume you have a mechanism in place to do that. But it really took me aback that um, there was uh, no knowledge of that while the while they were evaluating this particular property. So I, I don't know if that. I don't think we have to. Sorry. You know, this is case to case situation, and we really can't comment on something that's before a board. Right. 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 No, I was just wondering about the internal. I mean, how much everyone else shares from not only the, the boards from the boards, but the appointed boards, the building department, et cetera. I assume there's some sort of um, mechanism by which important information is shared amongst you. Uh, I, again, I attend these meetings because I find they're extremely informative. All right. So, Thank you, Eileen. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? No. Okay, that ends. I, I think. Yeah, I think we've gone over the fifteen minutes. I think we should move on to introduction. We have an introduction, a resolution to schedule a public hearing on September 10th, 2024, to consider a local law amending Village Code 265 4, stop intersections to amending Village Code 265 4, stop intersections to add stop signs on Bay Street at the northwest and southeast corners of Havens Beach entrance. So, what this would be doing, Council can speak to this. Is, this is just adding a stop sign at the intersection of Havens Beach and Bay Street. So what we'd be doing is putting, we have a stop sign right now as you come out of Havens Beach. There'll be a stop sign on either side of Bay Street just to, to kind of control traffic and to get that somewhat of a stop before they continue. Because right now Bay Street is probably one of the longer roads in our village without a stop sign. Was, was it, this was a result of a petition, a local petition? It's a result of the neighbors had written petitions. We met with a local neighbor who lives in that area. And this is a response. We have other areas in the village that we're also looking at, possibly putting up stop signs to right. slow down. Did we use our little recording box out there? We to, did. Yeah. Yes. How was but it? this not put us Chief. in the position of any group Requesting a stop sign in front no. of their house anywhere? No, and this is no. also evaluated by the police department. Yes. It comes to well, this board. All right. Again, um, I would just there is one hundred feet up the road, right by your house. That's it. That's it. Right, and I lobbied for it with the neighbors. Okay, good. <laughs> to uh, <laughs> yeah, but and that that originally was one stop sign, and then we made it. A, it was a, a three four, way, right? Then, then we made it four way yeah. to make it because it was four, it's easier to understand. Yeah. So. Yeah. That little group. Right. All I'm saying is that then there's going to be two more, and maybe another one. Well, and, and depending on the circumstances, it might be appropriate. I mean, we yeah, put stop signs that. on Madison Street right. um, over the last several years as well mm -hmm. to yeah. slow the traffic running through the village. Same thing for Bay Street to slow that traffic running through the village. I guess what I'm saying is, and I'll try to be quick about this. Is this, I don't think this is the way to approach traffic in general. We need to have the, this overreaching discussion of the of the, the traffic study and the rest of it. Oh, we, we certainly want to have a traffic consultant advisor. Out one fire over here, one fire over here. I'm familiar to, with putting out fires. But, but putting out fires is not a bad thing. Uh, well, 
And and pastry and is a very broad peripheral. Yeah, so okay. it can be a long like a speed as yeah. they go up and, there. And there's a, 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 you know, traffic calming says if the people feel like they can go fast, they will. Bay Street opens out the widest street in the village. If, it, if it's visually narrowed with bike lanes and, and a stripe in the middle, you could do a lot just with that. However, I'm we just could, saying- yeah. There's also I an understand. intersection we, there of two groups of people with different mindsets. There's yeah. people steaming out of the village and there's people coming home from, right. from, beach. from the beach with kids in the car. Right. Right, right. And when you mix this together with that, I, I, so we're we're on the we're, listen. If it's yeah. terrible, we can always take them away. Exactly. Right. So this we're, we're just introducing this at this we have point. Our public hearing Here, right. September 10th. Right, and then we could discuss it more as we get yeah. more information. So I need a motion to introduce it. I'll move it. Motion by Deputy Mayor Hay. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Kane. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Me. One opposed. So moved. That brings us to resolution. Number two, which is to schedule a public hearing on September 10th, 2024, to consider a local law to amend Chapter 215 Rental Registry 215-3 to delete that portion of the law requiring a fully executed lease as part of the application. Do you want to comment on this? Sure, this would um, delete Section 215-3. Uh, subsection B4, which requires a true, final, and complete signed copy of the lease between the owner and the tenant. And this was a request of the building department, which was having trouble processing these applications with that requirement in place. So, okay. All right. So, right now, we're just introducing it for the public hearing on September 10th. Do I have a motion to introduce? So moved. Motion by Trustee Kane. Second. Second. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Hale. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. That brings us to resolution three, resolution to schedule public hearing on September 10, 2024, to consider a local law to amend village code chapter 240, subdivision of land, article seven, variances and waivers, to clarify the waiver section of the subdivision of the code and create a subdivision waiver provision for those subdivisions that donate a lot for preservation. So you wanna speak on this? Sure, so this is amending chapter 240, um, it's cleaning up the waiver provision that's in place um, and making it a little bit more general. And then it's adding a specific section to allow for a waiver of subdivision process for those applications with no more than two lots, um, inclusive of the lot that's going to be donated uh, for preservation. Um, and uh, it would waive the process for that uh, before the board. So it would allow for I mean, they would still come to the board, but we right. would wait Give that flexibility. process when you're actually preserving one of the lots that you're creating. Um, I would just say to the board, there's a section in this which says, um, which caveats it to be for those lots which conform to zoning, the board may want to consider striking that portion um, only because a lot of your lots do not conform to R20 zoning. I think if we I should strike it. The vast majority of the town, so we I should strike it. Out yes. Before the public hearing, so that yes. it's in final form for the public. So we can tease this out more the public hearing because yep. we're just introducing it. Um, yes. But this would be if I have a lot, I want to subdivide it. Yeah. And one half of that, one portion, let's say, is going to be um, given or sold into preservation. Yes. Is there a is there a, like, is it a 50 50 split, 60 yeah. 40, 90 it doesn't 10? Say. It, it doesn't say exactly 90 10 or 50 50. We might want to consider it's where that. You're, which, but it's where you're creating two lots, um, one of which will be then donated. Um, right. But if neither lot which, needs to be yeah. conforming. Yeah, that's true. You may Then you could yeah. just take a sliver off and say, right. I want to I want to donate this sliver, but then I want to avoid right. by doing that, I want to avoid mm -hmm. the process. That's a good point. So, so we just so we can hash it, it out. Yeah. Let's yeah. hash it out. Yeah. It also gets rid of a section of the code that's in place, which says that the, the subdivision regulations take effect upon approval of the village board after adoption by the planning board, which is not the correct process. So your board adopts code legislation. Yeah. Okay, so I had, do I have a motion to introduce? I'll make the motion. Motion by Trustee Corr, so I have a second. Second, second, second to any of the conditions that council um, said would amend this by, is that right? Well, yeah, you don't need to make the motion. We can okay. discuss it further before the public hearing. Okay. Okay. It's a so a second by Deputy Mayor Hay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. So that brings us now to action items. Uh, we have a resolution 
to reject proposals submitted in response to requests for proposals for traffic engineer services. This is what we had discussed earlier. So I need a motion. I'll move this, yeah, for the RFP, for the first ones for engin uh, environmental engineering, the second ones for traffic um, engineering services. I have it listed traffic first. So mm -hmm. that's all we're on now. So I need, have a, I need a motion. I move it. Motion by Deputy Mayor Hay, a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Plum. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Second is the uh, Village of Sag Harbor resolution to reject proposals submitted in response to requests for proposals for professional engineering and environmental science services. I'll move it. Motion by Deputy Mayor Hay. Second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Kane. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. That brings us to Incorporated Village of Sag Harbor resolution authorizing a request for qualifications for professional engineering service for village projects. I'll make that motion. Motion by Trustee Corris. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Plum. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Incorporated Village of Sag Harbor resolution to authorize mayor to sign a retainer agreement with Peter D. Johnson for tax satori. Hope I said that right. Close. Legal proceedings. What does that mean? What is that? Certified. 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 Okay. Been doing it for many years. Certified. Certified. Yeah. He's Certified. extending his services. Yeah. Motion by Trustee Plum. Second. Second. Second by Deputy Mayor Hale. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Incorporated Village of Sag Harbor resolution to rescind the Board of Trustees approving appointment of Janine Conte as full-time Deputy Treasurer, as we spoke of earlier. So I need a motion. I'll move it. Motion by Deputy Mayor Hay. Second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Kane. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Resolution Incorporated Village of Sag Harbor resolution to accept the recognition of Gabriel Grency as part-time court officer. So moved. Motion by... Trustee Corr, second. Second. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Hay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. That brings us to action item, special event, and special. There's a couple more. It's not folded. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So, number seven authorization to accept June 2024 bank reconciliation and collateral reports. I'll move it. Motion by Deputy Mayor Hay. Second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Corris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Missy Hessler, president of Sag Harbor Volunteer Ambulance Corps, requests to accept the resignation of Zachary Pair as EMTB effective immediately. I'll move it. Motion by Deputy Mayor Hay. Second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Corris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Missy Hessler. President of the Sag Harbor Volunteer Ambulance Corps requests to accept the resignation of Raja Livas Casa as EMTB effective immediately. So moved. Motion by Trustee Kane. Second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Corris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. That brings us now to action items, special event and special use permits. Gene Kane and Paul Zakowski request authorization to have a wedding reception at 325 Division Street on Saturday, October 12th, and brunch on Sunday, October 13th, 2024. I excuse myself. <laughs> I would make that motion. Motion by Trustee Corris, second. Seconded by Trustee Plum. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Colleen Gregonis of the Sag Harbor Fire Department Ladies Auxiliary requests to have ladies night out on Thursday, December 5th, 2024, from 1 p.m. to 11 p.m. at the main firehouse, 1357 Brick Kiln Road. Also request to place signs on Route 114 and the grassy area of Long Wharf from November 21st, 2024 to December 5th, 2024. We have a motion. So moved. Motion by Trustee Corris, second. Second. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Hale. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Kimberly Barbour of the Cornell Cooperative Extension of Suffolk County requests authorization to have Back to the Bay's Oyster Reef Planting Workshop on Wednesday, August 21st, 2024, from 2 to 5 p.m. with a rain date of August 28th, 2024, from 2 to 5 p.m. Also request permission to place signs 
on the grassy area of Long Wharf from August 7th, 2024 to August 21st, 2024. So this is part of the oyster seating that we're going oh, yeah. to be doing. I'm very interested. So moved. Motion by Trustee Kane, second? Second. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Hay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Co Colleen Gregonis of the Sag Harbor Fire Department Ladies Auxiliary requests authorization to have the annual pancake breakfast on Sunday, September 15, 2024 to October 6, 2024 at the main firehouse, 1357 Brick Hill Road from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. Also request to place signs on Route 114 and the grassy area of Long Wharf from September 15, 2024 to October 6, 2024. Have a motion. I'll move it. Motion by Deputy Mayor Hay, second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Corris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Jennifer Edwards of the Sag Harbor Whaling and Historical Museum requests authorization to have the 725 Art Exhibit opening reception at 200 Main Street on September 7, 2024, from 5 to 7 p.m. Also request permission to place a banner on their property fence from August 2024 August 24, 2024, to September 7th, 2024. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Trustee Corr. So I have a second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Plum. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Alana Urbana Marino of Safe and Sag Harbor Hugs Incorporated requests authorization to light the windmill at Windmill Beach and Cupola on the municipal building Purple for the month of September for National Recovery Month. We usually do this every year. Yep, so moved. Motion by Trustee Kane. Second. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Hay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Rory McElvoy of Sag Harbor Chamber of Commerce requests authorization to have Harbor Fest 2024 on Friday, September 13th, 2024 through Sunday, September 15th, 2024 from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Long Wharf, Windmill Beach, John Steinbeck Park and Marine Park also request permission to place signs on Long Wharf, Route 114, and Mashash Mewitt Park from September 1st, 2024 to September 15, 2024. I'll move it. Motion by Deputy Mayor Hay. Second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Corris. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Kristen Santori of the church requests authorization to have celebrating creatives of color. Art and sales, art show and sale at 48 Madison Street on Sunday, August 25th, 2024, from 12 to 4 p.m. We have a motion. So moved. Motion by Trustee Kane. Second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Corr. So those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. We have a walk on for the guests. Yes. Yeah. I'm not joking. You want yeah. to put that in half? So. Jeffrey Terry of Azure S Property Owners Association requests authorization to have comedy night on August 30th, 2024 from 7 to 11 p.m. and at 3 and 7 Terry Drive. I love it. Motion, Second. Deputy Mayor Hay, seconded by Cor Trustee Corris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. So the, we have another item on the agenda, which is to approve. I don't have it in front of me. It is. Incorporated Village of Sag Harbor resolution to authorize the mayor to execute any and all documents pertaining to the New York State Green Resiliency Program for the Bay Street Stormwater Abatement Project. So I need a motion. I'll make a motion. Motion by Trustee Corris. Second. Second. Seconded by Trustee Kane. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. And that brings us to the bills. Motion to approve the payments presented in warrants number eight in the amount of $523,299.66. Warrant number 10 in the amount of $243,709.32. Warrant number 11 in the amount of $9,355. Warrant number 12 in the amount of $620,635.71. ,600 I need a motion to pay all those warrants 8, 10, 11, and 12. So moved. Motion by Trustee Kane. Second. Second. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Hay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. That brings us now to our public comments. 15-minute public session. 
input for comments, questions, three minutes per speaker. We can hear from the press tonight. I'd like to, I'd like to speak. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you have something? <laughs> can you introduce yourself? I'm Dennis Hartnett, from the East Hampton Star. How do you say your name again? Hartnett. Hartnett. Dennis yeah. Hartnett. Yes. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Dennis. Nice do we have anybody online? Okay, so motion. The first. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second by Sorry. Trustee Corris, yeah. seconded by Deputy Mayor Hale. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion is now adjourned. Hey. Uh, meeting August. is now adjourned. It's August meeting. Okay. I like these August meetings.